Taking over the game one step at a time Everybody has these dreams of being first in line It may take a little while before we reach the light We just gotta take Transformers Revenge of the Fallen was released in 2009 and once again is directed by Michael Bay and once again star Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox and in this film a piece of the cube has accidentally landed on Sam's shirt within the two years from the events of the first film I guess maybe he didn't do his laundry and somehow didn't notice the piece of the cube on his shirt I don't know and within the course of events in this film he starts noticing a bunch of weird symbols that has some relation to this old supreme being known as the fallen that is trying to make his comeback and take over the world and it's it's transformers revenge of the fallen there there really isn't much of a plot to this film it's mostly just a bunch of events leading up to the finale of the film but We'll get into that later. Now this film came out in 2009, two years after the first one, and there was a lot of hype going with this film. I unfortunately wasn't one of those guys getting with the hype for Transformers Revenge of the Fallen because 2009 was the year that I saw the first Transformers film. So when Transformers 2 was coming out, I wasn't really there to hype up with my friends getting all excited. I definitely remember people talking about it during summer break and then eventually when we went back to school, everybody was talking about it once again. And yeah, I was just one of those uncool kids that didn't see it when it came out. And I didn't even see it even after that. I actually just watched it for the first time a couple days ago. And finally, after so many years of just hearing horrible things and finally having seen it and just still hearing nothing but awful things about this film, I wanted to actually give my honest opinion without jumping on the bandwagon like how people like to hate Nickelback or people like to hate Coldplay or how people like to say that Terminator Dark Fate is the worst Terminator film and I didn't want to jump on that bandwagon. I wanted to give my honest opinion of what I really think about Revenge of the Fallen. Now my honest opinion is that this movie's not good. No, uh, this movie is not very good at all. Now another thing I still need to make clear which I made in the first Transformers review is that the Transformers films are meant to be dumb, stupid, big action films. You're not meant to take these films seriously. It's just a giant action movie blockbuster. But keep in mind, this film came out the same exact year as Avatar, which was also a big action movie blockbuster. But the difference between those films is that Avatar not only was more action packed, but it had compelling characters and a much better compelling story. And Revenge of the Fallen doesn't have any of that. Does it have some cool action scenes? Yeah, sure. It's got a really cool scene that takes place inside a forest where Optimus Prime is just slicing a bunch of the Decepticons. It's badass. The opening scene to this film, which takes place in a different country, is awesome and I love it. And that is pretty much it. Those, I, I guess that's kind of just only the only positives I can really think about with this film. Other than that, this movie is just fucking bad. Shia LaBeouf is once again fine in this film. I mean, it wasn't like he was giving an Oscar-worthy performance in the first film. He did okay for what he needed in the first film, and in this film, I think he still manages it. I think he plays the role fairly well. Megan Fox is definitely a lot better in this film than she was in the first film, but then again, that's not really saying that much. But she definitely does hit the mark a little bit better with some of her dialogue delivery. I think she plays it a little bit better um, but like I said still not saying that much one funny thing which is I guarantee something that a lot of people are not gonna notice watching this film is for some reason whenever Megan Fox is running away or like getting attacked or in danger rather than screaming like a woman would be if she was being chased by some robot shooting lasers at her instead of screaming Megan Fox just feels the need to moan every time please observe <laughs> Like, look, I've never been in a situation where I've been running from a robot, but I'm pretty sure I would be, like, going, oh shit, oh shit, or screaming, not going, uh, uh, uh. Who knows, maybe Michael Bay thought it would be a good idea for the men in the audience to hear Megan Fox moan, but... I, I don't know. And once again, much to my dismay, the parents are in this film and are even more annoying than they were in the first film. What is that in your hand, by the way? Oh, I got this at the bank sale for the environment that those boys are having. You know, you don't often see white boys with the dreadlocks. Hey, you, my son lives in this storm. Only oh, recently had his cherry pop. <laughs> he didn't know I was in the house. I heard it hey, all. Hey. I don't know who this Hey, Professor, I'd do anything for an A. All right, Grace Slick, we got some snacks in the car. Let's go. Did you get the booties? Yeah, I got the booties. Fine, if the government's paying, I want a pool and a hot tub. Okay. And I'm going to skinny dip and you 
<laughs> oh boy. We also get introduced to a new character named Leo who is Sam's roommate in the film and I think he's fine. I know a lot of people really hate him but I didn't think he was too much of a bother. He's mostly just there for the comedic relief and I don't really think there was much of a purpose for him to be in this film. I just think the problem that relies in this film is really what were the screenwriters thinking? Like they kind of just thought, well, you know what? People don't really care about Transformers fighting. They don't want to see Optimus Prime slicing Decepticons with a sword. They don't want to see any of that. They just want to see a lot of the human characters throwing a lot of stereotypical sex jokes here and there and just being really cringy. And every now and then we get maybe a small little action sequence and sometimes you can't even really tell what's going on. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, that forest action sequence was probably the best part about this film. It's probably the only thing that this film really had to offer. Other than that, this film offers nothing new or fresh. It is literally just the same exact film. God, I'm really, it's really hard for me to think of some more positives. I mean, uh, Optimus Prime is cool. Bumblebee is cool. Megatron is cool. Uh, Tony Todd, you know, AKA Candyman. Uh, he's voicing the Fallen in this film, and his voice is cool. The, the whole thing about this film is that they the film is called Revenge of the Fallen, so you think, okay, the Fallen is going to play a big part in this film, and he really doesn't. Every now and then he shows up just to give like these speeches about how he's going to finally take over the world, and when he finally enters the world, and there's this whole big action sequence that happens at the end of the film, it's actually kind of lame. I think Transformers Revenge of the Fallen probably has the worst climax to any film ever. And with this entire movie just being fucking insane, I mean, there's a part in this film where Shia LaBeouf is about to have sex with a robot disguised as a female, and the beginning scene where the freaking piece of the cube turns all of the, like, microwaves, the stoves, the refrigerators into robots, and they're shooting at Sam and his parents. All that stuff is crazy, and it's funny and cool but then as it goes on and when we finally get to the main action sequence that's supposed to end this film it's just lame eventually when it gets to the end sequence where optimus prime is brought back to life i mean spoilers he optimus prime dies in this film for a couple minutes and then he's brought back to life by something called the matrix key which is a main plot device that they are trying to reach to in this film and it's just I don't understand what they were thinking. We wanted to go into this film to see Transformers fight. And did we get that? Sure, maybe within 15 minutes in total of screen time. Other than that, the film is focused on Shia LaBeouf, Megan Fox, John Turturro, who's back in this film again. And it's just like, I don't care. Like, I want to see robots fight. That's what we want to see. We don't want to see these horrible weed brownie, dogs having sex jokes, or Rain Wilson playing this creepy college professor, and all the students, all the female students in his classroom are these porn star Barbie looking girls, and we don't need this. We, we just don't. Michael Bay and his writers completely missed the point of what Transformers fans wanted to see. And we are left with this insanely boring, long drawn out, insufferable film. There's another thing about this film that I guarantee a lot of people are not going to notice either, is there's a part when the Decepticons are coming into Earth, it's literally the same exact scene from the first Transformers when the Autobots arrived to Earth. The same exact scene! It's the stock footage from the first film, and they use it again! That is some of the laziest shit I've ever seen in a big budget action film. Hollywood action film. It's literally the same exact scene. Look at the comparison. It's not even a comparison. It's the same exact fucking scene. Oh, what the fuck? There's also one really weird scene that just happens out of nowhere. It's specifically where they're in a completely different country and there's police officers chasing after them and this happens. Sam, you gotta get off this road and lay low. Man, you stupid cop. <laughs> this is what's called blending in like a ninja. What the fuck happened in between? They're just like, we gotta get away from the cops, and then automatically after they say that, it shows them in a completely different area. It's like, how did they get there? The cops were right on their ass. How, how did that happen? 
they didn't show anything but people who are going to defend the Transformers films and just say you're thinking about it too much you're overthinking it are not going to give a shit because they're going to say Transformers is made to be this dumb action film it's not supposed to have human logic yes I get that but there has to be some logic okay some logic you can't just tell me by some miracle they just so happen to get away from the police and it doesn't even show us how they did it. Doesn't even explain. I just, I just don't understand anymore. I just don't. Now, in the first Transformers, there were a lot of explaining and stuff, but I gave it a pass on that because it was the first film and it was in a way setting up everything up until the next films. But in this film, there is so much exposition and it just gets tired some after a while. A lot of explaining and you see a bunch of really cool action scenes happening in this exposition and it just makes you wonder why couldn't this entire film be that why are we just having to show these scenes when someone is explaining something i would rather see it i don't want to see a snippet of it just from somebody explaining what happened in the past it treats the audience as if we don't even know what's going on like we're just that stupid one thing i also want to mention which is very funny is tom kenny is actually in this film yeah Tom Kenny, who voices Spongebob, he voices Mudflap and Skips, wh whatever the fuck those guys, those robots' names are, and also voices Wheelie, and it's kind of funny hearing his voice, but every time I hear it, I just can't help but thinking about Spongebob talking like that. Uh, that's the best you can do? Freeze! Oh, that's my eye, you crazy bitch! Oh, I, I seek knowledge from the cube to fall into man. You got the shot. I need the shot. Give me the shot. I need the shot. Give me the shot. They're gonna whack me. I'm gonna be done without that shot. Oh, easy, warrior goddess. I'm just a little savage scrap bro. Also, what's up with the robot balls? How does that even work? With that being said, Revenge of the Fallen is, it, it's not good. It sucks. I, I don't like this film at all. Like I said, it has some cool action scenes here and there, but... Other than that, it's just a long, drawn-out, boring film that leads to a very disappointing finale, and uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. I'm going to give Transformers Revenge of the Fallen a D. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching my reviews. Look forward to more coming soon, and I'll see you guys next time in a new video. Peace. Right.